Earlier on in these set of skills, uh, we looked at yes, no for preference. And if you remember what that was, is we would present a child with two objects, one uh, they like and one hopefully that they're not that interested in, and we'd ask them if they want it. And they would give a yes, no response, you know, based on whether they like that object or not. Now that's an important skill, but another really important skill isn't, uh, is yes, no, for confirmation. So that isn't for preference, it's just to confirm something. Now, the difference in these two skills is actually pretty important. So, yes, no for confirmation is a really, really uh, important baseline skill for communication because those are things like, have you brushed your teeth? Have you done your homework? Uh, things that don't necessarily revolve around whether the child wants it or not. It's quite easy for a child to get the hang of. If someone offers me something, I say yes. But a more general yes, no uh, confirmation concept when applied to the world is going to open up a lot of different communication avenues for your child. And as a, as a parent or a teacher, it's going to make your ability to get functional information from the child a lot easier because if a child can accurately confirm with either yes or no, if they are otherwise limited in their language, you're going to be able to use lots of different questions and frame things in lots of different ways to get an accurate yes or no confirmatory response and you're going to be able to get a lot of information from the child like that. So, it's really simple to deliver once again using our token strip. I'm just going to have a few different objects and you know, this is this is a cup here, I'm going to say, Shelda, is this a cup? Yes. Great work. Mm. Shelda, is this a cup? No. So, that's what it looks like when it's done well. Now, obviously, if the child doesn't get it uh, correct in, um, in the first few goes, uh, you, can just, you can just shape it and you can just prompt it in very similar ways to what we've already done in this video. Now, uh, when you would start doing this, you try to make the objects fairly mundane because, you know, uh, as Shelby has a previous history of really okay. enjoying this ball and you don't want a situation where you're presenting the child with a really desired object and you're expecting a no response. Um, they should be able to do that eventually, but when you first start, it, start off this drill, if I show this to Shelby and I'm like, you know, is it a car? I want her to say no, but she actually really wants the object, so she's likely to just yes. say yes because of her learning history. So, you can do this drill with many, many different objects, or just, just picture cards. So, you know, I have a lion, I have a duck, I have a snake, and I would just be like, is it a snake? Yes. Great. Is it a lion? No. No. So you can you can do it with anything. It's just about trying to get that accurate yes no for confirmation response. Because as I said previously, if you have a child who can do that really well, you can ask them so many different questions and they're gonna be able to give you a really meaningful uh, response that's gonna give you a lot of information.